Good morning, my brothers and sisters, on this, our 160th episode of the Good Morning Guys podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on this fine morning, afternoon, evening, or night, as we continue discussing the game of life amidst the other games we love to watch and to play. I'm one of your four hosts, the Brazilian Mountaineer and Transition Ninja, Lucas Ham Swisher. Also with me, the judge of the jury and the executioner of fake news and spoilers, Patrick Novacell. We already had a transition today. Mm. It's crazy. Seamless. Get right in. On, love it. On his left and my right, the volleyball and beast of the East, who can make you laugh in three words or less, Ronnie Johantis. Hello. Hi. And last but certainly not least, our grand opener himself, the final member of the GMG Quadfecta, who's got music in his heart, Apex Legends on his brain, and La Carreta in his old stomacho, Mark Boucher. Sorry, I feel like I had to steal your thunder, but I guess you gave me permission to do, to do it this week. That is right, my friend. You had my blessing. Now, hold on. I got to go back. Is Apex Legends still on your brain? It, for the most part. Okay. All right. Just, just making sure. Enough to it's... where I send you memes and stuff all the time. You, you are. Yeah, you send knowledge. It's yeah. got to be in a subconscious still. Definitely yeah. subconscious. Maybe yeah. not as conscious brain. Split gates more on the conscious side of things. I, I go out different places, but I always come home. Yep. Yep. That's true. That's true. Uh, speaking of coming home, eventually, the big uh, apartment renting home selling guy himself, Ronnie Johantis. Why don't you uh, give us a little update on what's been going on in life, my friend? How's that old renovations gonna, going? I was wondering how you're going to loop that around. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just kind of make it up as I go. It just came out that way. Yeah, so uh, nothing really new on the home front. Um, we'll probably list the house um, probably right around Thanksgiving, early December. So we go. got about a month and a half to get everything squared away so our realtor can come in and take pictures and you know do all that good stuff. Um, still working on that. It's horrible, like moving always is. It's just, it's, yeah, it's the worst picking up and moving everything that you have in life is like you question why you have anything. Oh yeah. Half of it's like, I haven't seen this in a in, in lifetime. Like I'm still I convinced that I only have about 12 items. And I think Elizabeth has about <laughs> 3 million yeah. like, just sprinkled throughout. is just a few of my things. That's all I have. Oh, look, um, my stapler. Yeah. That, that's my stapler. Stapler. Yeah. This is, uh, I think I have, I have the couch, the TV, just a couple of the mainstays. That's about it, really. Oh, you got the important stuff, though. That's all you need, Yeah, really. I mean, before she moved in, this place was empty, so. Um, so that's pretty much it on the house front. Um, I did uh, finish helping my father and stepmom move into their new house in Lebanon. So they moved from, New or, or, uh, from Louisiana back up to Ohio. Um, they sold their house down there, bought this one, and they got to move in. They closed on it yesterday. So we moved nice. a bunch of stuff in there uh, last night. Uh, really cool little house. I don't know um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever been to Lebanon, Patrick, for oh. Lucas and Mark, who probably have not. Maybe. It is uh, a really like old school town. You know those towns you kind of just drive through and has a real old school feel to it. Mm. Um, it's one oh, of those yeah. little towns. Uh, so it's really it's yep. a really neat place. Uh, but we got all that done. It's nice. Uh, I'm glad <laughs> they still have a ton of work ahead of them, of course, but that's the whole moving thing. I mean, it's just uh, the worst. Uh, on the movie front, I did watch, I'm not going to say a new movie because I, I've seen pieces. I've just never watched it all the way through. And the movie was Pitch Black with Vin Diesel. Oh, wow. Yes. <clears throat> that's a cult classic. So I've always really liked Chronicles of Riddick. I, I like that movie the best out of the group um i've seen pieces of pitch black but i never um uh like i never watched it all the way through so i finally did that um it's okay <laughs> you know it's yeah. it's it, i mean the action's okay um he's not quite i i didn't realize since i never seen it before um i mean he's obviously like awesome like at fighting and doing all these kinds of things but it takes it like when they in Chronicles of Riddick, they like take it to the next level. Like he's the next level, um, you yeah. know, warrior. Um, and he shows a lot more of his skills, I think, like in those movies and stuff. So it was cool. I mean, it was a cool storyline. Um, 
<clears throat> I did not like, however, the like aliens. This they're, they're just kind of weird. I, I was a, a bizarre. Like the just movie a, is bizarre. It is. It really is. It really was a bizarre <laughs> movie. Um, now that I've seen it, it's one of those movies where I'm like, yeah, you know, I probably wouldn't stop on it <laughs> if I saw oh. it on TV. You know, yeah. like I've seen it now, and it's uh, now we're past it. Um, but that's the only movie I watched. I did watch a four part series on Netflix. Um, and it basically was, uh, what the heck was it called? It's like the, the many faces of Billy Mulligan. Maybe it's, it's basically about a, a criminal who was arrested. And basically after they arrested him, they found that he basically had 10 different personalities. So he didn't have recollection of some of the things that he had done in the past. And the four part series basically goes through, I won't ruin too much of it. Um, <clears throat> but it goes through all of that uh, kind of in depth, the multiple personality disorder. Um, and it's just really from a psychological standpoint, it's a really cool show uh, how they kind of go through that. Ronnie, it's uh, uh, the 24 faces of Billy Milligan. 24 faces of billy milligan got it you were you were close um, yes I, I was there i mean so, he was in the ballpark yeah, yeah, yeah so they um when they first arrested him they initially found that he had 10 legitimate different personalities mm. so different people that he literally like would turn into and really what it does is it goes through um all the details and things and um a lot of people still to this day think that he's just a really great con man and he had everybody going because um, this guy had committed some pretty brutal crimes and uh, later down the road, I mean, he was, you know, he's found to not guilty due to insanity basically. Yeah. Um, and they actually let him out on more than one occasion, like in the world. So it's a, uh, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing. Hmm. Uh, but I watched that. If you if you're into crime and and uh, stuff like that, it is a good series to watch. Definitely interesting. Uh, my fantasy team, um, absolutely laid an egg. I mean, like womp, womp. I lost legitimately to one of the lower tier teams in our league. For it's a team that's currently rebuilding. They beat me. <laughs> I scored uh -oh. a ridiculous amount of points last week. If I could have had six of those this week, I would have won six of those points. Uh, yeah, they just laid an egg. I mean, it's pretty much that's fantasy football. You just you can you can only start your lineup and hope for the best. Um, but yeah, there was one other thing. What else did I? Oh, I know what it was. So I am nearing the end of the storyline in Red Dead Redemption Two for the second time. Oh, okay, nice. And uh, I think I talked about it initially. I was going to try and play the game good um, instead of <laughs> bad like I normally do. <laughs> Right, right. Um, so so there's a couple, a couple of things I found when I first started playing the game. It's really hard to make money the good way. It's the worst. So <laughs> I immediately went to criminal activity and <laughs> amassed a fortune <laughs> that way. And uh, as I've been playing through the game, I just kind of kept playing that way. You know, uh, I got in, I got across, I got into one mission and. If, it, if you've never played Red Dead Redemption 2 and you are planning on playing it, just go ahead and skip ahead like 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, if, I mean, it's a three-year-old game, so I'm, I'm really not too worried about spoiling it for anybody. <clears throat> also, check There's out our mission. spoiler cast. Yeah, well. there, yeah, there is a spoiler for, cast. For finer details. Exactly. Uh, there's a mission where you're collecting a debt um, from somebody, and basically you get there, and it's a wife and a very small kid running around. Uh, the husband had passed and you're basically there still having to collect the debt from this woman. And she basically says like, what do you want to like the shoes off my kid's feet? Like there is no money. We have nothing. So I was like, Oh man, it's hard to be bad. Like in a situation like that, you know what I mean? Like she's yeah. pretty much like crying in the scene and everything. And so I absolved the debt. And that started a series of good decisions that I've been making ever since then. And one thing I think you'll find interesting, Pat, is do you remember how throughout the, like, it's basically like halfway through the storyline to the end, you start seeing these, like, you start seeing a creature, like a visions of a creature or dreams of a creature, mm -hmm. um, a different animal. Mine, 
pretty much up to that point was a black wolf who's legitimately stalking me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. cause I was playing the bad way. Right. And um, I remember you said you had like a, a deer, like a buck or something like that, that you were uh-huh. seeing. Yep. So I made a couple of like good decisions and I guess they had a lot of weight, like absolving that debt had a lot of weight. So it kind of catapulted me back up to like almost middle of the road as far as like my good and evil bar. So I ended up kind of being in the middle and now I'm actually on the good side. Oh, go. no way. Nice. So what I was, what I was curious about is, am I going to keep seeing this black wolf? Is this thing going to keep stalking me? And it turns out my visions have now switched to the buck. Nice. Later in the game, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, for anybody who's never played it before, there's multiple endings based on how you play the game. Um, last time I played it, I played horribly. Uh, it was despicable. And um, yeah. I got a brutal death that was just, I mean, I'm pretty sure I had a boot on my chest and the guy just shot me in the face and that was it. Like just put me down. Goodness. Um, so that's what I was hoping for is another, uh, a different ending. Oh, yeah. um, and it seems like I'm on the path to definitely get that. Nice. I can't remember how many different ones there were, but there is a bundle think, of them. I think. I think there's three, <clears throat> Is there three? at least three. Uh, I ended up and I played good. I was the good guy and I played and I got, I got a. I, I liked of of all the endings. I liked the good ending the best. Yeah. So I'm hoping to get there. Yeah, me too. I'm. Um, I I have to be pretty pretty close to the end. Uh, like Arthur's condition, <laughs> um, is pretty bad right now. So I it's I know that it's coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the game doesn't kill me, I, he's just gonna die. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I've really enjoyed like playing through that. Um. I got Elizabeth hooked on it, actually. Oh, really? Nice. There you go. Yeah, I told her, I thought, I was like, I, th- I think you might like this game. And um, she was doing something and I was playing it. And she like asked me a question about the game, like based on something that I was doing. And right then in my head, I was like, I got you. <laughs> like of that initial peak of interest there. Uh, so she has been playing like nonstop also. Like, she loves the game. There you go. So it's cool. Makes for a like a great going out dinner talk. Like we're just talking Red Dead Redemption two, the whole time. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it for me on that front. I'm gonna finish that game probably here in the next day or so, and maybe play just a little bit to kind of go do some of the stuff that I didn't do maybe last time because I'm not a person to complete a hundred percent and go through all the stuff. Some of the yeah. missions are just monotonous and awful. Yeah. So. Nice. Good stuff. But yeah, how about you, Lucas? Well, I uh, speaking of awful, I had an awful week. You can kind of oh, hear no. it in my voice a little bit. You sound a little I, sultry tonight. I, yeah, say, I, yeah. Say hello, sticky my sticky It is a little shoe. sexier. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I got faux COVID this past week. Uh, faux COVID. Yeah, it's COVID. It's fake COVID. <laughs> um, so it all started on Monday. Natasha started to get a sore throat, our 11-year-old daughter. And we told the nurse, uh, being responsible parents, and the nurse said, there's been, you know, change in the weather back and forth over the past week. It's normal. On Tuesday, her throat started to get sore, and she had a runny nose. And mm-hmm. we're like, mm, you, better, you better stay home. And uh, about 20 minutes after James and Mindy went to school, uh, Mindy wrote me and said, we're coming home. We are quarantined for possibly the next week until we can prove we Natasha does not have COVID. So uh, the Swisher family was pretty much quarantined in the house this past week. Um, by Wednesday or Thursday, I too started to get a sore throat. And by Friday, add that runny nose. And then Saturday and Sunday, I would say I slept about 40 of the 48 hours available to me uh, during that time. Monday came around and I finally became lucid again. And the, I could hear the birds chirping. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> um, I, I came out of my stupor. It was awful. I, I haven't been this sick since living in Brazil. Um, I most certainly thought I somehow had gotten COVID or someone had given Natasha COVID and then it came to me because it just hit me so hard. Yeah. Uh, have you but had we were, both um, both uh, vaccine shots? Yet? I have. I've okay. had both. Okay. Um, but 
you know, I don't, I don't know. I did, I've heard, you know, obviously it doesn't make you like invincible or immune. Right. It can and, happen. You know, because there wasn't, I mean, I was super fatigued, but nothing that was really happening with my chest. I didn't ever have a fever that I knew of. I think maybe a little bit on Sunday I had a fever, but hmm. it broke really quick. So I was like, well, I don't know. I, it, it might be I, it, in, in this day and age after 2020, I feel like everything, half of everything it feels like it, it could be COVID. Yeah. It's, it's like, that's the thing. Like not everything's gone. It's not like all the other stuff, like, yeah, like moved out stuff, of the way. Like, We're like, away. Oh, after you COVID go right ahead, <laughs> take over. Yeah. And it's kind of annoying. Cause like, that's what the schools and that's what pretty much everybody thinks. They're like, yeah. Oh, well you might have COVID. So you can't go anywhere. Yeah. It's like, Oh gosh. Okay. Here we go. But, uh, yeah, on Monday we went to the pharmacy, got a little test. I got my first real experience with the COVID test. Like, ah, shoved that baby right up my nose. The old swap. I wanted, it was not cool. Like, uh, <laughs> I think the last time Natasha's, this is the second time Natasha's been tested. And the first time she got tested, they just took a little Q-tip and swabbed it around the edge of her nose, and that was it. And I was like, is this legit? Like, are we nope. getting like well, that's a, that's not You're supposed to shove that up there. Is this a discounted <laughs> All version? All the way up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Can't see it anymore. Well, that's what I was hoping for that treatment this time around. And then Natasha went first. They're like, and... they're like you know what? Yep, you don't have COVID. Yeah, that's... yeah. And they take this long thing that it looks like someone took a Q-tip and then stretched it out three times its size. Oh, you got just... the old school one. <laughs> and then they just start twirling it slowly, and they just get deeper and deeper no. and, and it's like oh my gosh this is like this is like the man shoving the sword down his throat it's like oh what are you doing to my daughter and i'll like, just slap their hand like get it out of here what are you doing that's <laughs> too, way too high no oh, you don't do too far in there and man it didn't it didn't hurt as much as i thought but i wanted to sneeze all over this dude's face like just be like, <laughs> like well if i have covid you do too <laughs> <laughs> you're getting too sucker for putting this thing up my nose uh but so i survived that and then they, you know, we waited for a few and then we were both negative. So we're like, it's all good. right, now what? Good. Let's get back to normal life. And so today we did. Got back to normal life. I worked from home. The family went to school. Everybody's good. I just have this, you know, sultry voice. I'm on the mend, taking my meds, drinking lots of fluids, all that good stuff. My darling, um, I can't get enough of your love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're just during, sultry voice there. I, I'm just going <laughs> to keep rolling with it this whole episode. <laughs> Uh, one of the things we did during this time together as a family, we watched a newer show as per recommended by Ryan Straby, uh, on the discord. He suggested we watch Doug days on Disney plus it's little shorts about the dog from up, uh, super cute, hilarious. I don't know if you guys have watched them at all. Uh, it's, it's like 11, no. minute, five of 11 minute episodes, way too short, way too few. Um, I've heard of it. I haven't seen any of it, but it's great. It's it's Doug learns about the tough life of squirrels, birds, the savageness of puppies, the perilous beauty of fireworks, and more. Uh, I give it a nine out of ten, only because a nine out nine out of ten uh, talking chihuahuas. I don't know. No talking squirrels. There you go. Um, and it's just only because it's not long enough. It. If it were like double, like 10 episodes, or if they were like 15 to 20 minutes, uh, maybe I'd give it a 10 out of 10. But uh, I need more of Doug. Doug and Doug and uh, what, I forget the old man's name, the up guy. Um, oh, hmm, shoot. I'm blanking. Up. Up, up, up man. Up man. Up man. Up, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he, they're a really funny duo together. So it was cool to, uh, to watch them. And nice. uh, besides that, give me one second. I uh, I just laughed at a little bit of a little bit of snot came out. <laughs> <laughs> Brb, you guys, dude, that amongst yourselves. That reminds me. That reminds me, Pat. Like this morning. So, um, I don't want to get too much into my update, but um, basically, you know, this new job. One of the things that they're having me do. And Pat, you know about this is the is the learning modules that that we have for the job, like the my uh -huh. learning things. Yeah, yeah. That one I was listening to today involving emotional intelligence. Yeah. I swear, like every five minutes, dude, like had to hock a loogie. <laughs> oh, no, no way. <laughs> it yeah, was, was and gonna, it was like a loud. I was gonna roll like, with it, but I could feel it just hanging there on the. 
<laughs> my nostril and i'm like i don't think they can see it but i can feel it it's gonna distract oh, me man. the yeah. entire time so that phlegm is the worst just that uh, it's the worst yeah it's the worst um on the gaming front no baby plats that would have been uh i mean that would have been too much work well, what did you do week. then i mean no baby plats? slept <laughs> slept uh, well saturday and sunday i slept but prior to that when i was like on the road downhill uh when i wasn't quite in a bad place yet uh i of course played hades and <laughs> yeah, there you go. i have to mention this because i think mark is going to appreciate what a uh, little challenge i did last week Ooh. so I'll, i'm a part of uh super giant discord super giant games is discord the makers of hades okay and in their hades section every every month every other month they have a challenge uh and this month's for september was the legend of persephone triforce of the gods and so it was a Legend of Zelda uh, inspired Ooh. challenge. Okay. So you have you my use, attention. You use the Zagreus sword, which is like your basic sword. It's nothing, yeah. you know, nothing super special about it, but you can upgrade it. Uh, and there's like 10 different upgrades you can get. But if the RNG gods are in your favor, two of the uh, upgrades would give you the quote unquote master sword for this challenge. You get the uh, the piercing wave, which when you slash, it throws a little wave on the ground uh, at the enemies, just mm-hmm. like with the Master Sword. And then nice. the flurry slash, which is just pretty much like you just slash really fast. And uh, there is a, another uh, upgrade that I got actually on a couple runs that I think really also goes with Legend of Zelda because it's called a, the, the Dash Nova which pretty much oh, it makes yeah. you dash forward and slam the ground, which to me is like the, the charge dash. Link to the past, know, that, yeah. Like Link to the past. So, uh, But yeah, so you can get that. Uh, the only keepsake you can use is the Harpy Feather Duster, which makes food, a.k.a. hearts, pop out of broken pots when you hit them. Um, and then the companion you can get is either Shady or Fighty. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, Legend of Zelda, but it's the only... It's the only ones that like give you items and also hurt the enemies. I dig uh, now it. Now, the, the little wrinkle that they add to it that makes it even more difficult, you cannot use your dash until you either, uh, A, get to the, the hero's fight in the third area, Theseus and Sterius, or you find the hyper sprint from Hermes. You oh. cannot reroll to get this. So uh, I did, this, I did these, this challenge. It took me five times to get this challenge. And uh, I did not get the hyper sprint until the fifth time I did it. Uh, every time before that, I was like walking around like an idiot, like couldn't dodge anything, <laughs> like slashing and just like trying not to get hit. When I got I got the dash Nova a couple times and that had helped me kind of get out of the way, but it was tough. That um, would be tough, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy how much you really need the dash mechanic in the game. Um, but it took me about five tries. Uh, it was really fun. One thing that I didn't do that they wanted, that they kind of recommended, was using the control scheme of the Super Nintendo. That just broke my brain. Like you got to recalibrate. Like the X button does this. Oh and yeah. I, I was like, I'm not about to do that. I've already done like 130 runs of this game. I'm not <laughs> like switching it just for a few, you know, for this little challenge. At our uh, age, no, ain't nobody got time for that. No, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Um, <laughs> And then uh, one super nerdy thing that I did for, I think twice, one or two of the runs, and then I stopped doing it because I really needed to focus, is I queued up uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past bit tune music. Nice. And so they had like a, okay. had like a playlist. Okay. And so in Give the background, the I was playing, giving a little ambiance and, and playing the old Super Nintendo music. So it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Added a different challenge and, uh, you know, that I, I thought was really, really creative. So it, it added a little spice to the game. Nice. So, but that's that's all I could handle this week was old old Hades. Uh, gotcha. Other than that, just uh, hanging out with the fam, trying not to cough and cough on them or hug on them or snot on them or anything. It was that's good. It was yeah, it's good. It's pretty it's low So, ID kind yeah. of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's all I got. How about you, there, uh, Legend of Zelda super fan, Mark Boucher? Oh, What's me? up with you? Oh, you. Who, me? <laughs> yes, you. Couldn't be. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, my week's, my week's been pretty good. Um, obviously, we are in a second week of the new job. Things have been going pretty well with that. 
Um, they've, uh, I've been trained thanks to uh, my fearless trainer, Mr. Patrick, as well as obviously Eric, uh, Bingleman09. Uh, they've been training me pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, things have been going pretty smoothly. Um, still going throughout the rest of rest of this week. Um, it's I, I've, I've settled into it pretty well, I think. Um, so that's that's definitely been good um, to where I feel feel kind of comfortable doing it. So, um, nice. so we'll you just... are you are downplaying it like hardcore. Yeah, listen, so... I I try to take humble pie. <laughs> so all right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll chime in here. So. <laughs> Uh, last Friday was he was fully trained on one part of our calls, so we uh, were like, okay, let's let's get you some practice, let's, let's get you on some real calls. But Eric and I are going to be listening, and then if you have any questions, or whatever, you can just put them on mute, uh, put them on hold, or whatever, and we can direct you to the right area. We had a, he had uh, received a call where a the caller had so had bad hearing. And could only hear, it was like their hearing would go out every once in a while. So Mark had to repeat himself, you know, several times on the call because this person was just hard of hearing. So um, la- the, these calls usually last like 10, 11, 12 minutes. Uh, this one lasted a little bit longer, maybe 18, 20 minutes. And by the end of the call, uh, you know, like usually at the end of the call, they say thank you and then they hang up. Um, this call, his second call, uh the, of of taking calls this woman you know just went above and beyond and said appreciated his patience uh how understanding he was and and repeating things back to her and like gave him like glowing reviews and which is which is like awesome you know like anytime anytime you're in customer service because customer service is like a thankless job you know like you, sure. you, you get beat up like hardcore in, a, in customer service yeah. and nobody just calls to say hey everything's going great i just want to let you guys know you're doing a great job <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, calling because they have a problem you that's know? Yeah. that's the thing i always say about about customer service is that you are making a sucky experience less sucky or at least that's what the goal is yeah yeah but uh but yeah it was because uh, we don't get those and whenever we do get those i usually clip those uh calls and i put them into audacity uh, I know a little bit about about Audacity, and I, IT gave me the program, so it's on, it's on my on my desktop there. So I put it all together, and all the good calls, you know, I, I like to, to put them together. So you know, like, hey, we're because we're on the phone a lot, and sometimes it's thankless, and anytime we get stuff like that, it kind of lifts our spirits a little bit. So, but on on see, seeing it at Mark's second call uh, was amazing, and then and then his fourth call, he gets another above and beyond <laughs> thank you. I'm like. Man, he is killing it already. So yeah, he is. Um, yeah, awesome. yeah, that is really good. Really good. Mighty so kind, mighty yeah. kind of you. Yeah, I mean, like, especially with you know, people who are hard of hearing. Like, uh, that's not that's not like something they chose. So I mean, I I want to be patient with them as much as possible. Yeah, right. I've I've had plenty of family members and friends that are that have been hard of hearing, and so that definitely definitely helps with. You know, just being patient and just walking with them. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, work's been work's been good. Um, everything's going well there. Um, on on Saturday, uh, we actually had a surprise retirement party uh, for my father-in-law. Uh, my father-in-law um, retired from being a nurse for 25 years, mm. and. Uh, yeah, so we had a uh, surprise party on Saturday night at my brother and sister in law's house, which went went very well. Uh, they even had um, more. Uh, my my sister my sister in law Morgan she made these cookies that had like it was like one that was like in the shape of a pill, one was in the shape of like a a, a heart with the little pulse in it, and the one with like the like the that angel sign like health logo. I don't know if you've seen that. Does that have the snake around it? I think so. I think that's yeah, what yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they had like those designs on it. She did a great job with it. Um, and so we had a good time. They had a fire pit there in the evening, which was good because uh, things around here have gotten a little bit cooler. Um, I say cooler, you know, it gets in like the 40s or 50s at night. Uh, in And which in the south, that's I guess that's a little cooler. And I mean, it'll definitely uh, get yeah, colder. Yeah, 
Um, it'll get colder, but um, right now that's what they consider cool. I don't consider it sweater weather yet. Sweater weather for me is like 40s and 50s during the day. Um, but yeah. um, still, get things getting a little cooler around here. But um, so that was that was a lot of fun. And um, so two things I've been watching before I get to gaming. Um, well, I guess watching slash listening to. Um, so first off, the things that I've been watching, um, I've actually started watching the, the Star Wars Visions, um, series, if you've heard anything about it. Okay, yeah. For no, a little bit. What, what is that about? So basically, a whole bunch of anime studios. Ah, no wonder I haven't have... no, no, listen, it's Ghost of Tsushima with lightsabers. Yeah. Like, it's actually really good. That's, I see, now that get, piques your interest more than anime. Yeah. Put a controller on my hands and I'll play that. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, there's no controller. You could we could pretend like you're Clark and give you a controller and be like, You're you're doing it, Patrick. Oh. Good job, little buddy. <laughs> you're doing it. Yeah, what, what they do? what they did was they gave a bunch of well known anime studios free reign to play in the Star Wars universe and create their own stories. Um and just play with the mythos a little bit. And it's they're fantastic. Mm. So yeah. it's a TV show. Yes, they're shorts like like um, uh, the Doug the Doug one you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. Are, are they like just like you know this short is only this story and then the next episode? Yeah, they're is self, only that story. They're, they're all connected. self-contained. Yeah, they're all okay. self-contained. Okay, all right. All they're right. about they're about fifteen minutes in length, so you could you could take a couple or more in in bites, and and it's great. Now I started unfortunately I started watching it at night. Which was not a good idea, yeah. Because I just I fell asleep while it was going on, which <laughs> is not a testament to to you know their quality because they're great. Um, I just kind of fell asleep, but um, I'm definitely gonna watch the rest of them. They're all in different styles. Um, like the the first one is very like Ronin influenced, like very like if you took Ghost of Tsushima and put it in like that Kurosawa mode. Where it's all black and white and everything, yeah, that's that's what it is. Hmm. But you've got lightsabers, you've got, you know, Sith and and all that kind of stuff. It's it's awesome. Um, so I'd highly recommend it. Uh, again, it's called Star Wars Visions. Uh, just came out about a week ago, I think. Okay. All right. Um, and the other thing I've been watching slash listening to. And it came out actually for Batman Day, which was uh, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before. Uh, They celebrated, uh, HBO Max did, by releasing um, a series of uh, like radio adventures that's basically like an homage to the 1940s Batman radio serials that used to be on. Um, And it's uh, it's called, um, I think it's called Batman the Radio Adventures is what it's called. and it's it's basically like I said, radio style, podcast style, almost. Um, Jeffrey Wright, who you might know as the voice of the Watcher in What If, Ooh, okay. um, and he's also playing uh, Commissioner Gordon in the new Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Um, he plays Batman in this in this show, um, and they have a bunch of other um, actors, um, well known actors. Um, Gosh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. Um, they have John John Leguizamo as the Riddler, which sounds weird, but just listen. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. All right. I give a chance. Yeah. Um, and 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 several, just a bunch of actors. Um, you know, top actors for this, and it basically sounds just like, you know, a '40s radio serial. It, it's it's really cool. So I, I would encourage you to to take a watch or listen if you will if it is all they're all on hbo max so you do have to have hbo max to watch it um but uh definitely check it out if you have that um on the gaming side of things um so um sunday night um actually no friday night backtracking a little bit friday night i played a bunch of um split gate again with watson of the co-op trio podcast nice um as well as a guy by the name of pt stress that is his name on on twitch um he's great he's he's actually a kids pastor that's his that's his job and uh he he also streams on twitch 
Um, mm-hmm. Great guy. Definitely, definitely check him out. That was a lot of fun. Um, I think um, Cross from Comics in the Cross was there. Um, several others uh, were there. Um, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And then Sunday night, uh, I got to jump into the uh, Halo Infinite beta, uh, yeah. basically round two of that. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, mainly because they actually had some maps with vehicles on oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that was that was a lot of fun to be able to jump back into a Warthog or a Ghost um, and be able to play around in that world. Uh, everything feels so refined. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, Jacob Hallowed Fox Moon on Twitter. You've probably seen his name around. I, I have, he, yeah. He, he just joined our Discord, actually. I saw that. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so he was he he jumped into uh, to the game and played on stream with me. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and the other game that I've been playing is Kina Bridge of Spirits. Kina or mm-hmm. Kena? They say Kina in the in the game. Really? Yeah. I hear everybody like I'm listening to like spoiler free reviews of it. I keep saying Kena. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure they said Kena in the, in the game. I want to. I want to say it's been said by like developers and both ways in the game both ways. Yeah, it's like pajamas, pajamas, potato, patata. It's it's however you want to say. Kena, it, Kena, K. What's the other way? It's not Kena. It's Kena or Kena. 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 Yeah. I mean, Kena being K E N A. I don't think it'd be Kena. That that game that just came out, Bridge of Spirits. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kena is no longer a word to me. Yep. Said it too many times. Kino? Kino. Uh, yeah, we get to Kino. play Kino over the weekend. You play Kino with <laughs> woodland creatures? They're like... like... You could be playing as uh, SNL cast member Keenan. Keenan, Bridge yeah. of Spirits. Yeah. That sounds entertaining. Um, it's the new mashup. Yep. Um, but no, that's been a lot of fun. You basically play as a, as a spirit guide of, uh, this, uh, character who basically, um, assists or, or eases, um, wayward spirits into the afterlife, basically. Um, cause a lot of times when a, in a, if a spirit is in this universe, if a spirit is lingering too long on, on the earth, on this mortal plane or whatever, um, they're, they're, the spirit starts to get restless and agitated and starts to, you know, create uh, evil and, and, you know, damage upon the land and stuff like that. And so yeah. her her goal is to basically assist these, these spirits to move on. Um, so um, the whole story revolves around that very... Um, it's, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a platformer with some, with some good combat... Um, very like the, the best, the best way I've heard it described. And it was actually, a it was actually great. An article said is, is basically the best Zelda 35th anniversary celebration we've had this year. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Um, so which slap in the face for Nintendo, but you know, well, I'm glad you like it. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it about 40% of the way through, um, played it better better part of this weekend so that was that was a lot of fun i'm gonna obviously keep going and and finish it so nice um but yeah that's been pretty much it for me um except i do have one more thing to say and i'll i'll make it brief because i've been kind of going long (laughs) um so just real quick uh, we did announce on twitter i believe on uh, yesterday i believe it was um that I am once again doing Retro October. Hey, uh, welcome we did, back. We did I this. saw some of the games you put on Retro October. And I'm like, are, are those really retro games? Like, how old am I now? At this point, they're like, you know, 15 to 20 year old games. Some of them. No so, way. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you'll see a complete list on uh, on Twitter, and I'll, I'll probably put it in the Discord as well. Uh, first game we're gonna play is Saturday nights. We are playing Super Mario sixty four, mm-hmm. which is all right. The first game I ever played on the N- Nintendo sixty four. The first game I ever bought. So nice. Uh, Woo! Yeah. So lots of fond memories for, with that. So definitely come on by the GMG Twitch channel ten p.m. Eastern. It's gonna be on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So and that's it for Sweet. me. Sweet. Nice, Patrick. Hi. Hi. How are you, sir? 
Uh, I, I'm doing really, really good. This past week has been like all the ups, no downs this past week. Good. Uh, yeah. The Bengals good won. Hear. My fantasy football team won. I'm 3-0 and now. Uh, things are looking good in the football realm, uh, in the wrestling realm. So uh, for the past uh, year and a half, I have been watching wrestling. And I was like, the next, and we turned COVID, they didn't, they weren't touring. And I was like, and then they started touring. I'm like, the next time they come in Cincinnati, I'm going. Because I haven't been to one in like 20 something years. And so they, they, they came to Cincinnati last night. I took uh, one of my buddies uh, that uh, I used to actually backyard wrestle with back in high school. Um, so we, we, we went. And so one of my favorite wrestlers is Big E. You know, and he is part of this group called New Day. And it's a trio of, you know, tag team. They're like 11, 12, 13 time tag team champions. Like they, they're really good. Uh, and then last year, Big E, who's been with this tag team for years, uh, moves over from SmackDown to Raw. And the other two tag team members stayed on SmackDown, which was like a big, huge thing. So, um, he went on his singles run for the past year and, um, two weeks ago, uh, on raw, he wins the championship, the wow. hold the WWE title. And so I'm like, and I'm I, usually on raw on like TV shows, uh, the SmackDown raw and things like that. Uh, there's no title changing going on, uh, for the main title. Usually that happens at the pay-per-view. Uh, so yeah. Uh, when he won it, I was like pumped. Like I, I let out like a big, huge, like eleven year old boy scream, and my wife comes <laughs> running in. She's like, "What happened?" And I was like, "Big E just won the championship." So, uh, and I knew that I was going to Raw, and I was like, "Sweet, my favorite wrestler, I get to go see uh, at Raw, and he has a championship." So, we go, and I find out that the first match of the night is big e versus bobby lashley for the championship i'm like this is awesome so we go we uh we we see like half of the match and then bobby lashley's old tag team partners come in and interrupt the interrupt it and then bobby and then big e's uh, new day tag team partners come in and cause a you know the disqualification the match doesn't count and all that stuff the general manager comes out and he's like hey This match is going to happen whether you like it or not. And we're going to do it tonight, later on tonight for the main event. And it's going to be a cage match. And I was like, oh, yes. Yes. Not only do I get to see him wrestle once, I get to see him wrestle twice and in a cage match. Um, So it was was an absolute blast. Uh, It was, you know, it's Raw is three hours. Actually, and the match just started at 730 and they went all the way to 11. Uh, so it was like three and a half hours. So it was really fun. Um, the only downfall, the only thing that really kind of soured it just a little bit, there was a guy right next to us that would chant random things throughout the entire night for three straight hours. (laughs) He would chant. And then these weren't like chants, like, um, you know, like for, for new day, it's like new day rocks, new day day rocks things like that you know it's like it's a it's it gets the entire crowd going this guy would just say stuff that was just and no one no one jumped in because he was just saying stuff like that's not really a chant the whole crowd's gonna do you know he would say stuff he would say stuff like we don't like you we don't like you like and uh there was a one point where yeah, Bill Goldberg, he's up there and he's running his mouth uh, about uh, Bobby Lashley, who had like uh, body slammed his kid, his like 15 year old son or something like that. And so he's up there and the guy's over there. He's like, you're my grandpa. You're my grandpa. <laughs> it's like, dude, all night, all night. I was trying to have a conversation with my buddy and I was like, We're, we can't. I'm like, I'm so distracted. I can't get this guy out of my head. Um so yeah, it was it soured it a little bit, but yeah, I looking back on it, it's it's funnier than it was in the moment. You know what I mean? So yeah. I would have um, turned to him and been like, "Shut your pie hole." Yeah, I didn't. I mean, like, 
I, I have to have a good time. I don't want to ruin it by having, and he was, this dude was like drinking a oh, lot, yeah. like getting up to go to the bathroom or he's getting up to get a beer. And so there was like a really nice thing going on, on, uh, on the, uh, Titan Tron. They were talking about cancer and things like that, you know, like, Hey, step up to cancer all that stuff. And, uh, how all the wrestlers in there promoting it. It was really, really, it was really well done. And then the guy, the, the, he was like, Oh, well, after that, I need a beer. And I was like, you don't need an excuse to get a beer. You just want to get a beer and you're just going to make any <laughs> excuse you want. I was like, just say you want to get, get a beer and go. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean like overall I had, a, I had an absolute blast. Um, next time they're in town, I'm definitely going to go. I might, I mean, if I continue to watch wrestling, cause I haven't watched wrestling in like 20 years. So if, if they, every time they come to town, I think I'm going to go. I had such a great time. We wait, did Biggie, uh, did he defend his title? He did. Yeah. Nice. So he has, he has this, uh, this, his ending, his, uh, his move is called the big ending. And, uh, he puts the, his opponent on his shoulders and then falls down and like and like kind of like brings them down with them and they hit their face. Um, calls it the big ending. And so he ended with his cage match. He was up on the top turnbuckle and he threw Bobby Lashley over his over his arms. Oh if you gosh. if you look these guys up, these guys are huge. Big E was a former power lifter, so he's a big dude. Bobby Lashley is a former MMA fighter. He is a big dude. Like. Not when I, when I say big, these guys like are muscular, like the biggest wrestlers probably in the game today. Um, not tall, you know, they're just like the biggest muscular dudes. Like Brock Lesnar, big. Uh, Bobby Lashley's, um, I, I would say, just about as big as as Brock Lesnar, but like he's cut, like yeah. he, like no no fat on him at all. Um, so he throws him over his shoulder. He does the big ending from the top rope to, to and then he pins him and it, it ends it um so yeah it was it was an absolute blast really cool to see to see all that cool um on the gaming front so the only game i've played all week is days gone this game has hooked me in like like hades did it's not as good as hades hades was one of those games i could not put down days gone because of the save feature i can save it and then go to sleep Hades didn't right. have that. Yeah, that's um, true. But uh, but I couldn't really put this game. It was hard to it was hard to end it and save it because there's so many things you got to do. There's so many locations. There's so many camps. There's so many zombies and hordes and um, story beats because there's like a lot of side side missions. And I would do every single side mission before I had the, before I had to do the main mission because the side missions were just just really neat the story was good it connected to the main story uh you would see characters that you that you you did in the side missions later on in the in the game um which made those side missions even more important uh to the story um and so i did i did all that i i ended up beating it i finished the game um and i after i was done i was like i was like you know what there's i'm i'm only half basically halfway done with the trophies i think i i think i had like 21 trophies left after i finished the game and i was like you know what i don't know if i'm gonna go after the platinum so um after the game ended you know like it's just like any open world game where you continue in in the open world and so uh there was like another main mission it's like oh there's more main missions oh okay so i keep so i did so i did a couple main missions and like three trophies popped after i did that main mission i was like oh so then I went back to the went back to the camp, turned that in, and did a couple other things, and I got like three more trophies. I was like, "Well, I just knocked out six of these trophies. I guess I'm going after the platinum." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So um, I uh, I played, uh, did all that. There's like there's a lot of them were like collectibles. Finish all these, do all this, make sure you get all these things. And so um, that's another reason why I didn't know if I was gonna go after the platinum. But then when I realized after I had finished the game, I looked at all my like the progress for each one of those things. And I was like, wow, I'm really close to all of this. So I played on, I think it was Sunday, Sunday night. And yeah, Sunday night. And I tro- I dropped like 15 trophies in a row. Like or maybe, maybe not, maybe it was like 13 trophies in a row. Um, and so I was like, all right, I only have a few left. And so tonight, I was like, you know, it's probably going to take me about an hour to get these. 
and I did it, and I got the platinum. Yay! Yes. Boom. Yes. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, and one of the cool things about doing all the things that I did is there's one final main mission. Um, I looked on. I looked online. I was like, "Hey, is this the end? Like, is this? There's no more missions." I looked, and it's called the secret ending. Um, so, Lucas, if you're going to be going after that at some point, because uh, I know we're playing it for the GMG VGBC. Mm-hmm. If you do go after the platinum, or if you finish the game, uh, there is actually more story to it. Um, so it's really cool, um, and I really liked it. I looked online. There's not a sequel, which is they're not doing a sequel. Uh, apparently, this game didn't sell the way they wanted it to sell because of all the bugginess when it got, when it launched, uh, which is very very disappointing because I really loved this world. Um, so yeah, I love the game. Uh, if I would have rated it. I said it's nine out of ten. Mm. Nine out of Ooh, ten. Nine pretty, out of... Bike, pretty good. Bike scraps. Nice. So all right, yeah, all right. Good, good, nice. good. Yeah, I really, nice. I really like this game. Um, would I play it ever again? Probably not. Um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed my time in it. Uh, on the, on the TV front, not very often do the TV front. The TV front, my wife and I have been watching shows for. Oh, man, it's, uh, years. And we want we once we finish a, a, a season or a series, I feel like I fall into that uh, you know that proverbial show hole. Like, oh, what do we do next? You know, yeah. what is really out there? So we we this past week we finished Shit's Creek and Brooklyn Nine Nine. Nine Nine. Yeah, uh, two shows that we absolutely loved. Um, if we were to rank our top TVs of all time, TV shows of all times, these two would be on there and oh, for sure finish both of them in the same week. You know, like it was just like, Oh man, what a good, the two very good endings. Now what do you TV do? shows? <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're looking at like, what do we watch? I mean, like there's, there's other shows that like are highly rated that we've never jumped into before. So it could something like community or parks and rec, or how i met your mother or You're looking Big for Bang some type Theory. of like comedy show yeah comedy show we love just yeah. throwing on something for an hour watching a, a couple episodes and then we'll just we do that you know on a regular basis yeah um so that's just that's that's our thing you know we love laughing together i always feel we feel weird saying like even attempting to say the name of that show <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's uh it, it's that that show is so awkward and, but it's so funny. Like it's one of those where they know how to end a scene, yeah. and even when the scene ends, you're just like the, that. The the transition to the next scene even makes me laugh because yeah. it's so well done. Um, some of the best characters I've ever seen in, on any show. Uh, and what's really cool about that show is that um, uh, it's like a family yeah. that did this. Um, it's uh, who is it? Uh, Eugene Le- Levy or Eugene Levy? His son and his Sean, daughter yeah. are in the show. Yeah. Um, his actual son is his actual son, son in the show, and then there's uh, the waitress is actually uh, his daughter. So um, I didn't know that uh, I didn't know when that we either. first started, but it's uh, it's yeah, it's oh, two the very only, very good shows. <clears throat> the only thing I know about things I know about that show are are the memes that I get from like. Um, and the gifts. Dave, yeah, David from, you know, David on the show and his, I don't know, is that his sister or girlfriend? His sister, yeah. Sister, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way she says, David, David. And, yeah, and, they're in yeah. everything now. And that and, and um, yeah. the, the the mother, the way she says, bebe. Yeah, bebe. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's and uh, David, uh, he's, you know, you know um, his son, and he came to his dad with this show idea. Like he's like, I want to do this show. He's never done anything before. He was like on MTV Canada before this show. Hmm. Um, so it was just uh, really neat. There's like uh, on Netflix, there's like a 40 minute documentary about the making of it and all that stuff. It was, you know, really cool. And I didn't know nice. that there was something like, like I was like, Mel, did you know there's a documentary about Shit's Creek? And she's like, uh, she's like, no, but let's watch it because we were like <laughs> jonesing for some more. Yeah, um, that's hilarious. Yeah, really yeah, man. Cool. Mindy and I also finished Brooklyn Nine Nine this week. You this did, finale. We did, oh. and man, it was the perfect goodbye. It like, was, wasn't it? It it was all about family. 
yet again, 2021. It was the year of family, but uh-huh. it was so funny. Like, and and honestly, we finished it, and I just I I had to stop myself from saying, "Can we just start over and watch it all over again?" It just yeah, I, Mel, I love Mel, that. Mel and I, I can't may wait. or may not have done that already. <laughs> we may have already restarted. It. We may have watched three episodes from season one. Oh, that's so <laughs> awesome! Yeah, I. It's been so long because Mindy and I didn't like. Well, you know, like it, the way the seasons have gone, especially the last few, like it hasn't been straight, straight up. Stuff's happened, the pandemic. Yeah. And so we'd like watch a season and then wait for the next one to completely finish and then watch it. And because I don't, I don't really like watching it week to week. I like. I like binging the show like Brooklyn right. Nine because yeah, it's just laughs of plenty. But uh, I'd love to watch it again and just watch it back to back to back to back to back. Uh, what a show! Yeah. What a show! Yeah, very good. Uh, the last thing that I watched this best past week uh, was the video game movie Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. Ooh, All right, I need to watch that. Oh my goodness! I'm curious to see how this is because I this, thought about watching it too. This movie is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. I need really? to go back and add really? this movie in. Uh, this this really? movie was hilarious. Uh, there's a lot of video game references, like on point video game references with this. There's like um, GTA, there's Fortnite, there's Marvel in this. There's, um, there's so many references in, in this. Um, and there's like missions and things like that. And Ryan Reynolds is just an NPC. And nobody knows in this in this because they're like they're like basically in the matrix. They don't know that they're in the fake world. They don't know that they're not real. They don't know we know they know. We know. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> it's a uh, it's funny how the the how it's funny and smart how the story continue, goes on uh, throughout the and unravels in, in the movie. There's was a lot more to the movie than the trailers show um because they show all in the in the in the trailers they show the hilariousness and the explosions and things like that yeah um but you don't know the story uh it gives in the trailer none of the story is in it um and really the story is really really good uh side characters all the npcs um it's really hard to um say anything bad about this movie um mm. i cannot i could not find anything uh, this is a movie where I would watch over and over again because it's a lot of hilariousness and the story is really, really good. Um, and they move it along. It's not like it's a two and a half hour movie where it's dragged on. Like it's tight, it's concise, and it's perfect. Um, I would give this I would give this a 10 out of 10. Like hands down, nice. 10 out of 10. Um, I would recommend this to just about anybody because this is not just a video game movie. This is a comedy and this is a, and sometimes it can be serious, but it's Ryan Reynolds. I so the Ryan seriousness Reynolds. is kind of like snarky at also. So uh, you kind of laugh at it too, um, but it's, it's, it's perfect. Um, actually, there's only one thing wrong about it. It's PG-13. So I watched it with my daughter and my son was in there and there was no, there was just a lot of action and there was no like, intimate scenes or anything like that you know it was just there was a little bit of cussing because it was pg-13 but then there was the proverbial f-bomb oh one f-bomb in there and i was like uh what gotta sneak that one in of course i'm like what is this rated and then uh you probably know this but pg-13 movies they can have like at least two f-bombs in one movie before it's rated yep. R, I, I think it's that. I think it's three or maybe is it, or maybe is it it's three. Four. I thought it was. I think it's two. two most. Is it two? Okay, so once you hit the third one, then it excessive. becomes a rated R movie, and that's like a, a hard stop. Yeah, like I think Whoever made that up. I think yeah, it does. In, in my mind, it's like if you drop an f bomb, I think that's you know that's a, you up that rating. To <laughs> yeah, yeah more is not like that do is any more damage. Yeah. Oh, I heard it twice. That is the pinnacle of uh oh. I don't maybe man. I mean. That's a whole different topic of things to say, but of the cuss words, you know, like <laughs> yeah, in you, the you English get to language, that point, American English language, that yeah. is the pen. I mean, like, I mean, if if they if they threw in the threw, threw in chalice or tabernacle, who knows okay, what it would have been rated? Those Canadians would be in an uproar. Yeah, sorry, Canada. or they'd be joining in. <laughs> Canada, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a uh, kingdom. Um, 
Yeah. So, uh, um, so speaking of me not understanding ratings, that's our topic of the show. Yeah, it is. That's right, folks. We are talking about ratings, and that's all type of ratings, whether it's video game ratings, TV ratings, or movie ratings. And it all stemmed from me watching this movie, and I'm watching it with my kids. Like, they say, they said the F word, and I'm like, uh, what the heck? I I thought I looked it up on parentsguide.com, which if you don't know about it, this is a great place to go. Like there's is like it's 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 a small like paragraph of any movie you'd want to see, whether it's PG, PG 13, any movie out there will give you a parent's guide. And it's always something little like it's if it's rated G or PG, it's like, oh, why is it rated PG? It's like, oh, they have like um, a they're maybe there's drugs that are implied about something, yeah. but it's never shown like that's like, oh, OK. It's like, but then maybe there's uh, adult themes. And when I yeah. say adult themes, it's like uh, maybe there's a husband and wife who are getting in an argument, you know, like, and it's like, oh, okay, that's really, that's really, that's what it's PG for because they're having an argument. Um, and then I found out about the, the F bombs. You're allowed to say those in PG 13 movies. And then rated R is basically like a catch all. Like if you don't want PG 13, it's rated R. So basically I just found, I just read that. Um, yeah. If you, if you say more than one f bomb that is not in a sexual context, um, then it's oh, then so, it's rated R. So if it is, you can say it as many times as you oh, want. No, wait, if hold it on. is, then it's automatic rated R. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, you get, it's just you get the way one you say non. It. Yeah, you get one, one non, non after hours. If, yeah, use and of then it. if it goes to two, then it's rated R. But if it, if if that one you have okay, in the movie is, is within a sexual context, then automatic yeah. rated R. Not that I agree, but it makes sense. Yeah. No. According so, to the MPA. I mean, I, I get it. It's like the uh, the number one number one bad word. Yeah. Uh, of of anything. You say that that people you get eyes. Like, oh, he just said that. Oh, you know, like mean? you know, you, you throw a mother in front of it. You're like, oh, he means business. Whoa. <laughs> uh, but uh, but then the, the, like all the other all the other cuss words. I mean, you can say those like all the time ad, ad and, it's, and it's and it just stays pg-13 uh which doesn't make any sense to me it's like what isn't there like the um what was it uh it was does it seem departed? definitely like the most aggressive bad word though for sure it really like, is it's in its own league there's like nothing up the there only with... time the only time i don't think it feels aggressive is when irish people say it because they use ooh instead of uh yeah. And it's like it's kind of hilarious you, to you. you is crook, that what you're saying? You crook. And it's like it doesn't it doesn't sound bad. Like I'm like, I don't know. I, that one I don't think it's feel I don't bad. think it's bad to them. No, I it's, think it's yeah. just it, normal. it depends on the culture. It does. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I said American English earlier, like an American English language. Well, that's like culture. the S word. And they say it instead of. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I've been like, uh, so. <sighs> Let me let me kind of give you my journey of movies. Take us on a journey. So growing up, and I'm gonna start in my teenage years. Well, um, that late? Yeah, because that's can't wait really, till we get to my journey. That's really, I mean, that's really <laughs> when uh, I was able to see, see movies on my own. Oh, okay. So Lucas like, was 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so I was. I, I face running. I enjoyed. <laughs> I enjoyed our movies because they were like the thing. I was like, I'm a oh, teenager. Yeah. Our, our is the, ah, is the way cool. to go. Yeah. So yeah, I know. It's like, you're going to see a PG-13. What are you, a kid? You know, like, so uh, I would I'm stay away. this pirate movie. Stay away. Arr. Yeah, PG-13. Oh, the Disney, the first Disney movie. Uh, that's PG-13. Uh, that's a big deal. I mean, like, that's, that's like Disney coming with the times. I mean, like, there's so many PG-13 movies that, that Disney had. So I started with rate. I started, I loved rated R movies. And as I got older, I kind of fell back into the PG 13. Cause I felt like PG 13 is going to give you a story and not try to shoehorn in stuff that doesn't even make sense to the story. Like why show a scene, even though it has no bearing on the story, but you want the rated R rating because of that. Yeah. Like, and to a certain audience. Right. And that's why I'm like, that's when I started to go to PG 13. I was like, I don't need these five minute scenes when you could just kind of remove that or 
just insinuate that that's going to happen and go on to the next scene. Like I don't, it's, it has no bearing on the story. Um, and then I get, then I then had kids and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta <laughs> bring this back. I gotta start watching some G movies and start so then, then, then PG. And I gotta tell you as a dad watching G movies and PG movies with your kids is like a joy that I don't never thought I needed. You know what I mean? It's the golden age. It's a golden age for parents to watch PG and G movies. Pixar, yeah. Disney, DreamWorks, like, yeah, we got like good. watching watching Frozen and all the animated new animated Pixar and Toy Story. Like, I, like I, I never watched Toy Story because it came in the time where I'm like all rated R movies, and right. I never watched Toy Story. I think uh, that any of those scenes or any of those original like Pixar movies, never watched them. I think the key to at least this particular age of those G and PG movies is because I think movie studios have really wised up to the fact that parents are there too. And so they've kind of stepped up their game and not so much like, you know, you know, putting adult humor or anything, but just like, here's looking at you Shrek. Yeah. The pioneer (laughs) of inserting the adult themes into kids. What a great job they did though. They did. They were, they really were pioneers. I think. But like they do a good job now of, (laughs) making sure it's a, a well thought out and, and, you know, well planned story that kids and adults can enjoy. I think a lot For of sure. those movies that are out now are, have kind of found their, their stride in that sense. I mean, there's plenty of movies where they throw adult humor in there and the kids will never notice, but, but I think just they, they've stepped up their game story wise um, to include it's like that's why so many movies are called family movies, I guess, not just kids' movies. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's just having, I think, the I think PG 13 is like the sweet spot. I really do. I think that's the sweet spot of movies. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. For, for a little, you know, a little bit older, um, PG and G, I mean, those can be some really, really good movies. Um, and I've seen, I've seen many of them since i've been been a father and i i feel like they're especially with those disney pixar like this is that that studio is i would say probably the best studio that's out there next to marvel um right so uh i'm gonna head over to discord and i'm gonna see what some of these other folks in the discord have said about what they like um so you done messed up. A. A. Ron says most of my stuff is PG thirteen, not because I'm some sort of prude or anything, but it just happens. So happens most of my favorite movie slash game franchises fall in that range. I'll watch, play about anything if it's good though. Um, I agree with him. I will play. If, and, and I've only talked about movies. If I talk about games, I will play any game. Yeah. I will play just about any game. I've got, you know, I played the Red Dead Redemption, the Days of Days Gone, the WWE, the sports games, and I even played Unicorn Princess. <laughs> you know, like I beat it. I played that for four straight hours and beat it. And um, they're in your gap there, <laughs> but not because it's good. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember the rating I gave it. I wonder if I gave it a rating. I need to, was, I need to fact check that one. If you didn't, it's because it was bad. And yeah. you didn't want to be a negative person. I've played worse positive. games than Unicorn Princess. You have. 100%. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's the worst. But it was definitely not in the top half of the games you've played. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It, it wasn't was, on my top 25 list. Yeah, no. It's too, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if I would get to... Is it bottom to, 25? I don't know. And probably not. No. I, I, I don't know if I would get to the point of listing every single game to to the point where i would have unicorn princess finally ranked right like, I don't top even... 1000 <laughs> i don't know maybe probably maybe i mean i finished it Possibly. i mean how if i finished a thousand games in my lifetime maybe <laughs> maybe yeah maybe finish a thousand games and if, if i have it'll be on there there you go um bernabe el ronchas butters i'll watch everything because I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm an adult. I usually don't look at the ratings anymore. Advantages of not having kids. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Like I look at the ratings and like, okay, can I watch this while the kids are awake? Or do I have to wait till they get to bed? You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, so I, I, I'm the same. I don't chiming in all of us. I don't look at all. Go ahead. I mean, it doesn't make any sense yeah. for me to really look into it. Uh, I will say um, on, on my side of things, at least I, I do look at what's in it. And even though I don't, I don't have kids Yeah. Uh, mainly, mainly because, you know, you know, sexual situations, nudity, things like that. That's, that's an issue for me. That's where I, I have to draw the line and, and kind of safeguard myself um, from that. Um, so, I mean, that's that's a big thing. I mean, language, I don't like it, but it is what it is. It's pretty much in every more adult movie that I watch. Yeah. Um, and for me, most of the movies that I watch are, are PG-13. I, I really don't mm-hmm. watch that very many rated R movies. Um, there are some, but for the most part, like the last, like, yeah, pretty much a lot of the movies I've watched within the last five years, most of them are probably PG-13. That's probably probably the sweet spot. Um, yeah. The last rated R movie I think I watched was The Suicide Squad, I think. Yeah, that was just for violence. Yeah, and, really? and cussing. that one had some conversations yeah, and, and uh, material definitely that definitely earned the R rating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, more. I think more uh, just over what the top. John Cena had a few things even in the trailer that he said that I was like, yeah. "Oh my gosh, I do yeah. not want my kids well, here in this trailer." Yeah, Margot Robbie walking through that it. jungle. Yeah. It's like what I would, whoa. what he would do for America. I'm like, not me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, what? <are> you... <laughs> I would not do any of that for America. <laughs> no, it's like, you do no, you, John. You do you. Uh, so I want to take you guys also on a quick journey, if I may. Sorry, Mark, did you want to? I was just going to say, listen, if if you can't be seen, you've got to try to be heard. Does anybody get that? I hope people get that. It's okay. We'll move on. Moving on. Sorry, buddy. John Cena, invisible. Can't see him. Can't see him. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Gotcha. (laughs) Gotcha. Uh, like Patrick did, I want to take you guys on a little bit of journey myself, uh, in my own experience. Uh, let me take you back to when I was seven years old when I watched my first rated R movie. Um, pretty much my parents thought as long as they covered my eyes and, you know, yeah, that movie, you know, <laughs> minimize, they said the words weren't a big deal. It was the, the, you know, nudity, the sexual, some, you know, the violence I could watch. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, there were some movies I watched when I was seven, eight, nine years old that I would absolutely like be mortified for my kids to see yeah. or even for myself to see again. Uh, I remember there was one movie called rising sun with uh, Wesley Snipes and Sean Connery. And you were seven. I know I wasn't that? whenever that movie came out, I watched it when it came out. Uh, my grandma told my mom that movie's not that bad. He can watch it. I think I was like, <laughs> no. I was, I was, I was 10. I think I was like 10 years old, 11, uh, and let me tell you, I was not old enough to watch that movie. <laughs> I learned a lot of things that day oh, when I goodness. watched that movie. Uh, it was, it was, I mean, it was definitely, it earned the R rating. Oh, but, uh, you know, just during that period of my life, like, because, not just because of those movies, but in addition to because of the movies and the things that I absorbed, uh, by elementary school, third or fourth grade, I was cussing like a sailor. Um, by middle school, I was, I was struggling with, you know, thing, you know, to get serious for a moment, like I was struggling with pornography and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so for me, uh, once I became a Christian, once I kind of, you know, talked things through with my dad, with, with, a with pastor and other people in my life who were like, this isn't good. This isn't normal. Um, you know, and even the Holy spirit, like God talking to my life and, you know, through the Bible and different things, I was like, okay, I, I can't just in and out, do whatever I want. You know, sure. it's, it's not a matter of, Ooh, this is wrong. I don't want to go to hell. This is a matter of, you know, I'm the temple of the Holy spirit. And I don't, I don't want to just let in whatever. And just, cause sometimes when you let in whatever, what comes out can be whatever too. And, yeah. you know, I recognize even with my, uh, with my stepmom later on in life, when my dad and I still were like kind of watching whatever movies, um, when I was like 12, 13, uh, we watched, uh, speed with my stepmom and she had just been talking to us how she doesn't like to watch 
you know, movies with a lot of violence or, or cursing. And, you know, she, she very much, she, in her past life, she had a potty mouth and all these different things. And so she, uh, we're watching, you know, speed and, and the villain does something to one of the protagonists. And she's like, I, I can't remember if she said like that SOB or, or like that. And she's like cursed at him. And my dad and I just looked at her and was like, uh, did you hear yourself? She's <laughs> what? like, what? did I say something? And we're like, yeah, you just said this. <laughs> and and it, I, I think it was the next week. My dad's like, yeah, we got to rein this in. This isn't good. Like yeah. if it's affecting you like this. And I, and I know that that's not a blanket thing that everybody's like just downright affected with it. Like, and, and I know that, you know, content with stuff that's mature, it doesn't cause people to go out and like murder people or do stuff. Um, but it also on the same other extreme, it doesn't help you. Like, it's not yeah. like, I feel so much better now that I watch this, you know, super violent movie. I feel good about life. I'm going to go, you know, save a baby from a burning I'll tell you what, or there's, something. There's times where I watch like, uh, and I like horror movies and a lot of horror movies have to be rated R because of the, themes. Oh, yeah. um, and I watch a horror movie and then I'll, I mean, like just to cleanse myself. I need to have to watch like an episode of Family Guy or something, just to like just so I can laugh and like before and fall you go asleep, to bed, be able to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, think... that's. Okay. No, go ahead, Mark. Uh, I was just gonna say, going back to your watching rated R movies or whatever at a very early age. I think I remember I was like ten or eleven years old, and I saw Face Off with yeah. with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. I think that was. Is that rated R? It is. It is it is rated R. There are yeah. some female anatomy that is that's definitely in the hands, movie. Hands, elbows. Yes, that's knees, it. Feet exposed. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> <laughs> knees and toes. Mouth and nose. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I remember. I think that's that's got to be one of the earliest rated R movies I saw, and I think it was like ten or eleven years old when I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, that one, that one definitely, uh, that definitely earns the R rating. But, but like for me, like I said, I, I, I was in the one extreme in elementary, middle school, became a Christian, kind of took things super serious. I like burned, threw away a bunch of movies, video games, uh, everything that I thought was like just over the line or just even got me too close to the line. And I just totally went to the far other extreme where I was like, I will only watch uh, Care Bears. No, it wasn't that kind of thing but it was just like i don't want to even touch that stuff and there was a period of my life where i just stayed away from it and it was like a cleansing kind of like you're talking about patrick like but i needed years to just kind of cleanse myself and then when college yeah. came around i met mindy you know i started to get back to you know even in high school getting back to a middle ground you know caring more about story not focusing so much on the content uh, still having limits, but at the same time, not living and dying by it. I mean, I would miss out on the Matrix and miss out on the Patriot, miss out on these great stories and movies if I was just like, well, it's rated R, so I can't watch it. I'll go to hell or something. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just, and so, so over the years and since, since college, I, I've, I've kind of ridden the middle ground. I let Mindy kind of guide some of the movies we watch because I don't really watch movies alone. Um, and so, and that's, that's pretty much all that to say that I, I kind of take it case by case. You know, I watched Logan more recently as a more recent rated R movie that definitely earned the R rated. Oh yeah. This, but it was so worth it. Like what a story. Like, yeah. So good. So as long as this got like a, a good reason, if it tips the, if there's a balance involved that kind of balances things out. Um, I could fast forward through stuff if I don't really want to see it or know that it's coming. I use common sense media a lot to kind of keep not just my kids in check, but to keep myself and Mindy to make sure she's very sensitive to it. So I can't, I can't, you know, make her susceptible to those things. So how do you, so, how do you yeah. feel about uh, days gone? So the reason why I ask, so this is a definite mature game and yeah, it, it is has language like yeah. the worst language I have probably played in any video game. Like it's really, really bad. And to a point where I'm like, man, I wish there was like a sensor mode. You know, like it's just like I couldn't play it around the kids. I could. I was only during during night. You know, like my my son, he loves zombies, and he wanted to see me go around and kill zombies. And I was like, "Sorry, buddy, we can't we can't play this." And you know, I could do some side missions and mute it, but that's not fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, is that I mean, for is me? That, is that bother? Does, does that bother you? Is that in the middle ground? 
I've it's it's I'd say I've gotten in the middle ground somewhat because I've gotten a little as I've gotten older, got a little thicker skin with that kind of stuff. And it doesn't affect me like it used to. But at the same time, I do have to like I can't play for hours upon the end of that game because it is excessive. Yeah, and the, vi- the violence is excessive. And, you know, but I played Last of Us. I played. But the, the story in that was just like so tip the scales. And, you mm-hmm. know, I think as long as it's got a good story or there's some camaraderie with it. It's not just about me in the game uh, for four or five hours on end. It's just like, I can just, I just play a couple hours and yeah. Well, with last of us, things. you have like really good story moments throughout, throughout it, you know, yeah. with days gone because it's open world, you have to do all this stuff before you can get to the story. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not few and far between, but it's not as often as a single player story driven linear game, like the last of us. Right. Um, but the story is there for Days Gone. It's a yeah. really, really good story, and I do, uh, do hope you continue with that. I think I think there comes a point where, like, if you have a lot of excessive... I get with, with swearing, you know, cuss words in, in more mature games and movies, like, it adds a gritty realism to it. Like, that's just how those, you know, those people in those situations, they're going to talk. But um, there comes a point where it becomes so excessive that it feels like lazy writing at that point. Like you, yeah. you yeah. couldn't, you couldn't think of something better for your characters to say. Um, I get it. Maybe another situation where you're playing to an audience, but I mean, there just comes a point where it's like, like last of us, last of us, both of those games, it wasn't like F bomb every other line. There were moments where they dropped it, but the story was, was, way way you know well done enough and and the the lines were there but they weren't like constant to where that was tasteful i guess i still don't right. like it but i mean that in that case you know it is what it is and the story was was really good and it doesn't get lost because of the constant cussing or, and things like that i think taste has a lot to do with it yeah if it's well done then for me, I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, with going going towards like nudity, most nudity is pointless. Yeah. Doesn't even make any sense. I remember. I can't remember the the movie it was, but Mel and I were watching something, and Mel and I turned to each other and were like, "That was well done." You know, like that was there was a it was an important part of the story. Yes, it was. It, it, they showed things but it was just like that was a very important part of the story and it made sense um i can't remember i have to talk to her find out what it was but um that's very few and far between it could be where you just like you know just like take the camera pan up to the ceiling and fade out and go to the next fade to black right yeah do or just do black like hades does just do black and then just insinuate that you did something yeah right (laughs) yeah yeah um all right, uh, Lord Zukor says, I prefer PG-13 or G. That's extreme. Well, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. What about, what about, uh, what about PG? Um, mainly I think he, maybe he means like between maybe the, uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, he says mainly G. because I watch, watch, mostly watch Disney and Marvel. So that's yeah. probably where he sits. PG's probably included. Yeah. Um, also, I find it extremely cringy when a film inserts that one bad word or pointless scene just to yep. get the desired weight rating, yep. which we which we had mentioned. Um, yeah, and it's always just like to in get the it last, in it because it's, it's like PG. the last fifteen minutes of a movie. It's when it's stupid where it's like, really? Oh wait, we're in the last fifteen minutes. We got to insert that f bomb, or yeah, yeah. we're not going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, the, the last one we have on Discord is friggin' nutcase squared. Uh, I literally don't look at ratings ever. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, not for me. Or... Love you, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I just know Travis, and yeah. I know that's exactly what he does. Yeah. Uh, not for me or for the kids. Well, they are older now, and it doesn't matter anymore. But even when they were little, I use kids in mind for that to get the gist of everything. I was very lenient for that, though. I do feel the ratings for kids' sakes should be broken down better so it makes it easier for parents or even easier for individuals with specific viewing needs. Some material is very sensitive to certain people. I know they give you a small blurb about it, but more detail would be better. 
I want to know exactly how many bullets get shot. Just, okay, probably not. <laughs> well, that's why, uh, like, um, different parents' guides and things like, I even, simplest thing, IMDB has a parents' guide for yeah. almost every movie that they that they put out. And, yeah. and, you know, they tell you they categorize it by, you know, uh, nudity and sex, violence, language, you know, drug use, that kind right. of stuff. They yep. they put they categorize it. They tell you what's in it. So that's that's been a big help for me at least. I think it's very important to look at multiple sites. Yeah. To get to get like a round well rounded picture. And what I do like about those sites is um, I never knew they existed before uh, I had kids because mm-hmm. I just watched whatever. Yeah. Um, but what I like about it is they give you non spoiler things about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, they don't they don't mention names of characters and they don't mention plot points. They say, hey, during part of the movie, this happens and none of it's story related, which is really cool. Uh, But sometimes I see these and then I watch the movie. I'm like, well, that wasn't in the review. Uh, that (laughs) That happens. Yeah. With some frequency, we we use uh, common sense media, and it uh, they can get pretty detailed and and pretty helpful. But then they have other movies where I don't know, maybe it's just there's one or two guys or gals on there that fall asleep during the movie, but they're very inconsistent sometimes. Where it's yeah. like, oh yeah, they don't. Uh, there's not much that happens here, and then you know well, they they liar. <laughs> nothing nothing's happened to the point of dropping the f bomb. But there was one Netflix movie that I don't remember. I think it was original Netflix, and this was like two three years ago. And it, it was like off brand animated. It was like three t- tiers below DreamWorks, you know. Yeah. You know, if, if Pixar's top tier, Disney, you know, you go down DreamWorks and, and then at the bottom is whatever this company was. And they were saying, dang, they were saying uh, HE double hockey sticks like multiple times in a, in a kid's movie. And we oh, were just like, yeah. did, did they really just say that? And it took a couple times and we were like, no, we're we're done with this. You know, our kids were like five and six and seven. And my daughter is pretty good about not repeating. I will confess that there was one time when she was three, she went on a YouTube trail without me realizing it. Mm -hmm. And she definitely watched some kid playing call of duty and they dropped the, the F bomb. (laughs) And I I hear my daughter playing with her toys and she's like, do, 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 and she just says it and i'm like oh, what did you just say <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to have a talk but yeah. uh but other than that like she's not like just you know she's heard some stuff and, and now she's a preteen she hears stuff and, and she asks us about it and we have conversations my son on the other hand is a parrot and he will repeat without oh, question what he hears be and there's been times where he's you know i've been frustrated and have said something or you know, and he just repeats it or he hears something on YouTube or whatever. And it's good that he sometimes it's good that he's a parrot because I immediately can be like, OK, buddy, hey, uh, do you know what that means? He's like, no, I have no idea. Like, then let's not say it if you don't know what it means. I think the yeah. most important thing is to just be present, you know, yep. whether whether you're like wanting to be, you know, super hardcore about it or whether you want to just let him do whatever. Be present. Talk about it. Don't just think it's not a big deal uh just no, have just, have the conversations with your kids about it yeah. i'm, I'm so with you that's what like, we try to do i i with with, with claire because you know we're getting into like the the pg-13 movies the the, P, the pg-13 movies that could be rated r um to that to that point so it's like okay pg-13 i'm looking at these comments like borderline movies. i'm looking at imdb um and you know like i'm, I'm like okay you know we have the conversations where hey, I'm like, hey, before we even watch this, I know there's gonna be language. And I was like, I was like, it's it's okay to watch something that has the language, but we do not say those words. Yeah. And I was like, because I if, if I ever hear you say those words, you're gonna be in big trouble. Hammer time. And so the it's like it's hammer. like it's like, okay, you know, like it's something that uh, I <laughs> I I lay out those ground rules, lay out the expectations, like, hey, this is what's gonna happen. Um, but if you do this, then it's, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, you got to know your those kids. Conversations you got to know what they can handle. And yeah. Like, and Claire you know. can handle it. Um, and Clark, get, Clark's heard it. Clark's heard it. Yeah. Um, and just like, just like any other kid, they'll say them not even knowing what the word means because yeah. they've heard it. 
But if you have the conversation with them, like, hey, no, we don't say those things. Yeah. Um, yeah I feel like they're going to hear a lot of that at school too. Like, oh, a hundred percent. There yeah. was a, uh, my, uh, that's my son came home and he said, he's like, he's like, daddy, what does bleep mean? And I was like, where did you hear that? <laughs> we don't use that word around here. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then Claire's like, ah, someone on the bus keeps saying it. And I was like, well, you oh, can tell, the the, you can tell the bus driver, you can tell your teacher, uh, but you do not say the, that word. Yeah, we my have... kids. Okay. My kids do not ride the bus. There you <laughs> go. Never ride the bus. You, you I know what happens your, on the bus. You won't subject your kids to that ilk. Of, I was that kid people. in elementary school, like writing words on the like during winter. Like you can, you know, write words on the window. I remember I wrote a word. I wrote Ooh. the word, and a kid immediately tattletailed on me. And I had no reason. I was just writing it. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, I know what happens on the bus. So Makes my kids are never right. Just the want bus. to watch the world burn. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Makes I me was think that of that scene. School kid. <laughs> Makes me think of that scene in a Christmas story, and they're like fixing the tire. He's like, "What did oh, yeah. you just say?" <laughs> <Fudge>. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't say fudge, <laughs> say fudge. <laughs> oh oh man, man. yeah, but when I was like, when I was a little kid, like you know, I had heard everything, everything by like right. By the time I was in like fourth grade, I'd heard, I guess not everything, but you know, pretty close. Um, kids said all that kind of stuff. So, um, of course, I, unfortunately, I heard my parents say it too. So constantly, yeah. but it is what it is. Um, so, I mean, there's only so much you can you can shield your children from. Um, but it's obviously, like you said, it's important to have those conversations, and and make yep. sure that they understand what they mean and why we shouldn't say them things like that so all right well that's all i had for this topic thank you for uh, indulging me this week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. back to you lucas. lucas anybody else want to share a limerick i said back to you lucas a rating oh or okay said back, back to, to me well, that's, well i, was uh, back I said else. back to you <laughs> i want to add good one day thing. sir travis uh <laughs> Travis mentioned that he wanted to know like how many bullets were fired. So then it got me thinking. I was like, I wonder how many bullets were fired in John Wick. They did they, they, tell, they, did they have a stat for it? Yeah. So that I looked it up, many. and this is the this is the second one. And it says at the end of the day, John Wick fired three hundred and two shots. That's only him, by the way. Everybody <laughs> okay. shooting throughout the entire movie. One, one Isn't he only using like a handgun? That's a ton. With an 80.1% rate of accuracy, that amounted to 128 kills. <laughs> <laughs> That's inhuman. <laughs> oh, man. He's the third one's shot. probably way worse. I mean, the third one was more extreme for sure. Yeah, 3 million. I do want to throw <laughs> out there I still haven't that. seen John Wick 3. I need yeah, to watch I that. I haven't seen the third one yet. There was a stint in college where I was able to get Mindy to watch some very... Uh, um, they weren't very R-rated, but like Memento, uh, Kill Bill... Which I think Kill Bill is funny. Like Kill Bill is like I don't think it's artistic. realistic. It's very artistic. Violence is very artistic. Very but like Tarantino. All the, the squirty yeah. blood and the, the decapitation. It's all so <laughs> like not real whatsoever. Uh, and I think that's where I I don't struggle so much with like video game uh, stuff just because it's so not real. Like I know they're they're more real now. Um, I will say that you know some games like GTA. Just the overall ambiance gets way too real and gritty for me. Yeah, um, it's way harder to steal a car in, in real life. Yeah, <laughs> that in is GTA. true. That is true. Uh, uh, that is true. Yeah, just give them up. Yeah, like but, my uh, like Kristen, my wife can't. She can't do like the really gruesome, um, gruesome violence. Like you're you're even like you're Walking Dead type stuff. There's there's certain scenes that like she's like no, I I can't. It's it's just too much. Yeah. Honestly, The Walking Dead, I mean, to be fair, it's pretty brutal. I think I stopped watching after maybe like the fourth yeah. or fifth season. But I think there everybody some, did. There's some, uh, it was not, it was when Glenn died. That was maybe the one of the most brutal. Yeah, that was that brutal. I've ever seen. That like brutal. that was horrible. Yeah. Yes. Like just to watch that, I was like, man, I don't even want to, I don't even want to see that again. Like that's bad. It sounded like you said brutal. I like, think I did at one point. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was definitely not brutal. Wow, that's a new one. Apparently, you didn't like Glenn if you thought you've that heard was it your fir- You've heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. Brutal. Mark's new word. He's so full of facts, he's making up words. <laughs> and now they're real. 
Uh, Copyright. Make beautiful happen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not a thing. It's gonna happen, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say um, when it comes down to this, we're, none of us are gonna all see eye to eye and agree. But I think it's worth getting in other people's shoes. Um, like for me, I feel pretty. I feel pretty. Um, I don't want to say set. I feel pretty comfortable with kind of my viewpoint on it all because I've been in all the extremes. And I know for some people, like I know people in my life as Christians, especially who have never crept past PG or, you know, they, they hear one little word and they're like, Oh, like, I mean, you there's know, a lot like, of good movies that are oh, in it's PG gonna strike or, me down. Or, 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 or G there's a lot of good. Yeah. movies. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. There are lots of good movies, way more movies now than back in the day, like yes. way better stories. Um, but, but like the people in the extremes, I really want to encourage you just to sometimes just, you know, whether you're all the way on the left, all the way on the right, whatever direction it goes, you know, if, you know, cause I know people that are like, no, the content of a movie doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect it's, it's, it's hokey. It's, it's prudish stuff. Uh, you know, I, I would challenge you take a break from that kind of foul content for a week, a month, see if anything happens. Cause I know for some people. If they took a break from it, there would be a, a weight lifted off. Um, everybody's different, but just the important thing is get in other people's shoes. Don't just write it off as, well, it's just the way I am. Um, really, really think through and be proactive about your stance on this stuff. It's I feel it's, I feel like so I, I'm, I am I am both. I'll watch anything and then I'm, I, I will. And I also love all things, whether it's like G or pg or pg-13 yeah. or r i kind of i kind of go towards the pg-13 um but there is something to be said about watching an r movie versus a pg movie like an r movie you're like oh man that was just rough and then you watch a pg movie like elf and you're just like man this is good this is like good feeling like oh just we're just watching this having a good time like there's yeah there's just a different feeling that you get based on the type of movie you watch or game you play based on the rating. It's like just an emotional thing, I think. Mm-hmm. It's the thing like Lucas said earlier, like you got to know your kids and it's like, yeah, it's the same, like for yourself, you know, uh, yep. like knowing how those movies are going to affect you and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I think if you just watched all like shoot them up movies where they're just, you know, curse words are just flying all over the place. It's brutal. Like, uh, that probably rough you up after a period of time, you know. Yeah. Have to take a little break in the middle. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, I think that concludes our radically rich content of rating discussions. I couldn't think of an R word for. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you were, you're, you're just like, this time. <laughs> I think that's my cold talk. You had, you had right. COVID, so you're fine. Yeah, I had COVID. My brain's you're, He had COVID. COVID. Yeah, I, yeah COVID. 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 Um, as is tradition, some quick housekeeping uh, where we offer tillo- tillos. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, man. Where we offer towels, fluff pillows, topped with Andy's candies, and tip you off to the GMG news you need to know. The GMG stream team is, of course... Uh, on and popping Sunday to Saturday. Mark is Tuesdays and Saturdays, uh, and it's Retro October, as he said. So check him out, hang out. Um, he'll, of course, be playing some uh, multiplayer games from time to time. So keep an eye out for him. Maybe it won't always be a stream, but he's always up for uh, the company, I'm sure. Agreed. Yep, yep. Uh, Chris is every bright early morning, 4 a.m except for Fridays. Uh, he's continuing the Days Gone journey. We play Borderlands 2 from time to time uh, with our buddy Blaze. And then I try to play most mornings, when, not except Wednesdays and Sundays. And, uh, he uh, is doing a bonus stream, Chris, is, I believe, on Friday. Oh, that's right. Parlez-vous mm-hmm. Francais yeah. on Sundays? Yes, but I think he's also doing one on Friday morning. Oh, that's week. right, playing uh, Plague's Tale. Uh, he's playing that, and it's all in French. So if you want to French it up, join uh-huh. him on, uh, on Twitch.tv. You can join all of us there. Links are in the show notes. If stream is not your thing, you can tweet with us on Twitter, discourse with us on Discord. 
uh, we just want to hang out and connect with all y'all. And uh, if you would like to throw some positivity our way, some stars, some exclamation marks, an encouraging word, please uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we just want your voice to be heard, just like ours are heard every week, whether you like it or not. Uh, speaking of what should be heard, uh, we have some GMG MAST 100 nominations to throw out there. Our music picks this week. Hopefully you guys are prepared. Um, who wants to start? Mm, I'm going to start. Do, Do it. it. So uh, I'm going to take you on a little bit of background of why this is my favorite song. The first time I heard this song, so I don't, again, I don't listen the, the mu- listening to music. I like someone says, hey, listen to this song. Listen to this album. That's what I'll listen to. Um, but uh, it was like a decade ago. And I heard this song uh, called Black Betty. Bam, oh, bam. Black Betty. Bam, bam, bam. And I was like, I was like, bam, what bam. is this? And I was with my buddy and I was like, dude, this new song is awesome. <laughs> <This new song. laughs> I was like, well, he's the first time he's heard it too. And I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. So we, we, uh, we're driving home from, from camping and uh, we go to, and we're talking to some one of our other buddies. He's like, you know, that was a seventies song. And we're like, no way. <laughs> it's new to us. Funny That's thing hilarious. is it's even older than that. No it's, way. Yeah. It's way older than that. I told you. I told you when you told me the song. This song's got some history to it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a cover. Um, it's it's actually... another cover for me. How about Patrick that? and his covers? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's it's actually an early 20th century African American work song that was actually written by a uh, a guy by the name of uh, Huddy Ledbetter. Uh, he went by the stage name Leadbelly. Very very famous uh, rhythm and blues player uh, and singer. Um, although some of the earliest recordings are not from him, um, he, he wrote the song. It's been, the song's been around for a while and Ram Jam uh, is the name of the band that, uh, they covered it in 1977 for their self self-titled album. And, uh, that, that, uh, that gained a lot of popularity. Hmm. That's probably the most recent one, the one you've heard. Um, so yeah. And Ram Jam is great. Great band. The old 2010 song, Ram Jam. Yeah. Black Betty. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Luke, I just, just imagine, go next. before I go to my song, I just imagine <laughs> like just going to a different genre and like someone coming up to me and be like, have you heard of this Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> 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 this game is amazing. <laughs> Uh, I don't Revolutionary. Know. I mean, like, yeah. I watched this new movie, The The Matrix. Oh my gosh. Blew my mind. <laughs> this, the sound of music, this new soundtrack. Yeah. I've never Did you know the hills are alive? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh so my pick for uh one of my songs that I love and adore is Nora Jones has come away with me. Um, it is a song song. that just anytime I hear it, if I'm in a, like a bad mood, if I'm anxious, it immediately just makes the anxiety just melt off of me and I can just feel chillax. It's, it's just, it's just so chillaxed music. It's so that, that whole album is great. Yeah, it really is. Just really chill. If we could just name the album, I would name the album, but I would, I just picked that one to represent Nora Jones. Which incidentally is called come away with me the album's called right. come away it with is me. yeah it is the, the, <laughs> it is the title song the title um of the album. but uh yeah so uh nora jones who has definitely created her own career um uh, for sure she is well known in her own right but she's the daughter of a famous sitar player named ravi shankar uh who um was a big influence <laughs> on the beatles that's his real last name Yep, is Shinkar. That why he started to play the centaur? Because his last name was Shin- Shinkar. Well, it is a it is a Middle East like a, an Indian, you know, instrument. That's, so yeah, I and they're they are of Indian thought, heritage. Funny, the, the, the rhyming. Yeah, um, but uh, obviously, you know, she changed. I I don't know if it's if she changed her name like, or if she just went with a i don't know i don't know how she got nora jones but i don't think her actual name is nora shankar mm. or anything like that right. um 
But anyway, um, it's hard to find some factoids on this. Um, it was very straightforward. Fair enough. But this song reached number 21 on the U.S. U- Billboard Adult Top 40 and number two in Canada. And it was also yeah, on the yeah, ma- yeah. the Made in Manhattan yeah, good soundtrack. Good taste, Canada. You Canadian. Wait, in Canada? Canada? Yeah. Canadian. Canada. You yeah. folks of Canada got some good taste. Good job. Number two. <laughs> Who's number two? All right. Who's next? Ronnie? And that leaves my song. Um, I picked the song Ohio by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Ah, yes, that brief period of time where Neil Young was part of part of Crosby, Stills, and Nash and nice. effectively added his name to the list. <laughs> the song is like one of the best like just cruising in your car songs like ever. It's it's fitting for an Ohioan. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> how, does that, how does that song go again? I need to listen to that one again. Is that Sweet Home? No. No, no. <laughs> You'll um, you'll know what as soon as okay. you hear it. I'm yeah. Look it up. Uh, so Neil Young actually wrote the lyrics to Ohio um, after seeing photos in Life magazine of the the Kent State College uh, riot where a bunch of college students were killed yeah. after protests. You know, very violent protests, and uh, recorded it in just a few takes. So sweet deal. It's nice. a great. It's an awesome song, and it's just it it's classic CSNY. Great beat. Yep, love it, love it, love it. And my my selection is the Wallflowers' "One Headlight." Nice. This is probably one of my favorite oh. songs of the '90s. Um, Ooh, I'm yeah. I'm a huge Wallflowers fan, huge D- Jacob Dylan fan. Yeah, that uh, is a great song. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it was actually the very first single. To reach number one on all three of Billboard's rock airplay charts. So modern rock tracks, mainstream rock songs, and adult alternative songs chart. Mm. Well done. And you should listen to the Wallflower's newer stuff. It's actually really good. They just came out with an album this year. I'll be honest. I think we've already... I think we've already talked about this, but I could do just a like my top twenty-five could just be nineties music. So yeah, this is this has been really hard. Like every week, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to pick another one, <laughs> <laughs> and it just somehow I'm gonna. I know we're you gonna, just be, be, like, um, gonna be like fifty honorable mentions. Can I just say the Green 90s. Day Dookie the album? That's <laughs> the album. All of it. Yes, just the nineties, the decade. <laughs> yeah, the nineties. That is the hard it. thing, honestly. Like for me, has been like and there's a like a ton of songs that I really like, but they're really not for this list. You know, yeah. Um, it's hard to find songs that are completely clean. Some, and I mean, some of them just have a you know a word or two in there somewhere along the way, and you're like, ah, yeah, uh, ruins that one. Yeah, but it does also. I mean, it has me like exploring like a more of like my favorite music. You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. It's cool looking at that. And like, because yeah. I have a, I have a list of like maybe fifteen songs. And I'm like, man, I don't know what's next. And then you know, having a conversation with Mel, I'm like, what songs do you like? You know, and then <laughs> I've done like that with Mindy. trying to trying to you know get my brain going about you know about that era or bands that are around that same time or maybe band members from her her band and my band maybe they dated at some point because all that stuff it's like trying to get that memory going but yeah uh, yeah this is it's tough trying to nail down my you know top it's a good challenge though yeah and that's it that's it for me all righty then pat mark and ronnie J, along with you our beloved friends family and joiners go get your good morning this week and may god bless and guide your lives as you live as you work and as you gain and then stinky shoes. As stinky you- shoes. <laughs> <laughs>